right. Hey, everyone. How's it going? It's your brother, Noah. I hope that you guys are blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. And today in this video, I wanted to come on here and talk to you guys about Father God's love for the saints of God. I was talking with my wife the other day and pondering on something that I kind of realized in more depth from a worship song that I was listening to. And it's such a good revelation for being able to receive God's love and his blessings more thoroughly, which if you don't know, can actually be a difficult thing many times. Our flesh can get in the way of receiving God's love, of receiving God's blessing. But this revelation is that God does all that he does wholeheartedly. God does all that he does with zeal and passion. You know, many times I think we subconsciously assume that God is just like reluctantly doing things for us. But God is not like a man. You see, many times we as human beings and even as Christians, we do things that we don't want to do. We do things out of benevolency. We do things to deny ourselves, right? Which is a good thing many times actually to do the righteous things that you might not completely want to do. But sometimes when you're battling the flesh, you're dragging your feet to do something, right? Or sometimes you might do an act of love, but your heart is not fully involved as it should be. But such is not the case with God. Father God does not have a flesh that he has to deny. Father God does not have to do things that are in opposition to his will. So when he does something on your behalf, he does it with a zeal. He does it wholeheartedly. You know, it's not like God's up in heaven saying like, man, I really don't want to bless this person, but I guess I'm going to help them out. Man, I don't, I, re I really don't want to forgive this person who's repentant, but I guess I will. Like he's like, you know, reluctantly wanting to give us something. No, if God wants to do something, there's nothing holding him back. And because of his love, ultimately, that just allows him to fully with his whole heart do what he's doing. So when God does something for you, take this into consideration that God's not just reluctantly, you know, blessing me because I finally mustered it, uh, up enough faith or because I finally am close enough to him. No, he does it on his sovereign timing. He does it because he wants to. God does things for us because he wants to. God is not manipulated like people are. You know, many times we human beings, and hopefully not as a Christian really, but will pressure people, pressure even uh, subtly manipulate people to do things because we want them to do it. You can't do that with God. God is not manipulated to do things. God is not pressured to do things. Now, I know we can pray to God, and you know there are places in the Bible where you can make a case that he changes his mind. But nevertheless, when he changes his mind, when he does something, he does it wholeheartedly. So when you're, you know, asking for something from God, don't feel like a burden. Don't feel like, man, I know God doesn't want to do this for me, but maybe he will. No, if he wants to do it, he real if he's going to do it, he really wants to do it wholeheartedly. The Bible talks about the zeal of the Lord performing things in the Old Testament, that God did things out of zeal. What does zeal mean? Like a wholehearted commitment, like a passion. God does things out of passion when he does things. Once again, it's not like he's up in heaven saying, man, I guess I'll do this for my child because they just keep bothering me. They just keep asking me about this. And we should be persistent in prayer. We should be you know, continually asking God, don't get me wrong. But as, as far as Father God's heart disposition, that's not the way that he's interacting with us. Even with small things, even with, with subtle things, don't look at yourself as a burden because God's, God's not going to do it if he doesn't want to do it. You know, he's not going to do things where it's like, oh man, I have to do this. No, God does whatever he wants. He does whatever he wants on the heavens and the earth. So if he wants to do something, he's going to do it wholeheartedly, right? Even even other things like, you know, judgment. And there isn't like this uh, double-mindedness with God. There isn't this, you know, him having to do things in opposition to his will, right? Isaiah chapter 9 verse 7 says, of the increase of the government and the peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment 
and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So this phrase shows up multiple times in the Old Testament that God does things out of zeal, out of passion. Look at the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, let's actually look at a psalm that's talking about Jesus. Psalm chapter 69 verse 7 says, Because of your sake I have borne reproach. Shame has covered my, my face. I have become a stranger to my brothers and an alien to my mother's children. Because zeal for your house has eaten me up. You might know that phrase from the New Testament in John chapter 2 because that's where uh, the book of John, or rather Jesus, is quoting from in the book of Psalm here, chapter 69. It goes on to say, And the reapproaches of those who reapproach you have fallen on me. When I wept and chastened my soul with fasting, that became my reapproach. I also made sackcloth my garment. I became byword to them. Those who sit in the gate speak against me, and I am the song of the drunkards. So when Jesus Christ went through all that he went through, he didn't do it reluctantly like, man, I can't wait till this is over. You know, like this subtly complaining attitude that we have many times. Don't get me wrong. What Jesus Christ went through on our behalf is immeasurable amounts of suffering. It wasn't necessarily like, a, a, a positive or pleasurable experience, but as far as his heart disposition and what he did for us, it was totally out of zeal, totally out of passion, totally out of wholehearted commitment. And isn't this what God taught us in the Old Testament and the New Testament? Don't just obey the Lord out of outward, you know, um, out of outwardly having to do so, right? Out of outward conformity. In the book of 1 John, it says that the commandments of God should not be grievous to us. This is how we can mirror God's love in a deeper way. That when we do something, we do it wholeheartedly. Because every time God does something, God does it wholeheartedly, right? So we shouldn't have this grudging attitude where we just, we, we do righteousness outwardly, but we're like so opposed to it internally. We're subtly complaining with it. We're subtly dragging our feet with the fact that, we have to do what God is leading us to do. And don't get me wrong, you have to deny your flesh, yes, but your heart should be wholeheartedly committed if you're doing something on God's behalf, which ultimately should be everything in a perfect in a perfect situation. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17 says, The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. So this is what God is talking about to his people here in Zephaniah. Uh, this is what it's saying about how he's going to interact with his people. And just a number of verses earlier in Zephaniah, it's talking about how the house of God was not faithful, the prophets were corrupted, the city was corrupted. And then when that restoration happened, when, when God, you know, restored his people, it didn't say, it's not articulating something like, Man, God was was really upset, you know, but uh, he just found it within himself to forgive. No, if he's going to forgive, he's going to do it wholeheartedly with a passion. So we should therefore freely receive it. This is why th this mentality will help you to further freely receive from God when you know that God isn't doing things on your behalf reluctantly, right? And let me say this as well, too. Even when God doesn't forgive people, it's not like he has some personal offense or he's holding bitterness or he's holding unforgiveness. God not forgiving people is not unforgiveness. It's, it's not because of unforgiveness in his heart. It's rather a judicial standing of that person has not been declared justified, right? He, God, as king over all of creation, has not... Uh, declared that person justified. That person is a criminal in the eyes of God. I hope you understand the distinction between that and holding unforgiveness in one's heart. So when God forgives people, when people become reconciled to God, once again, it's not like he, he found it within himself to get over the grudge that he had towards against people. No, God is, is, is ready to wholeheartedly forgive people but because, of peop but because people won't repent is the reason why they're not forgiven. So I hope that 
situation right there about forgiveness further, you know, um, brings across the point of what I'm saying about God doing things wholeheartedly. Now, I do believe when people, you know, have fallen into sin and th then they repent, God forbid, hopefully they would never fall into sin to begin with. But, you know, there is a, a, a stage of restoration that needs to go on. God does chastise people. God does bring people through chastisement and conviction, right? But, uh, you know, it's not like we have to muster up enough uh, sorrow to convince him to want to forgive us. God may altogether in his heart, he does altogether in his heart, I believe, want to forgive people. But it's because people are not willing to repent as to the reason of why they don't receive the forgiveness that would be freely and uh, joyfully given to them, right? Even about Jesus Christ that said, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of God. So I also wanted to read Romans chapter 8, verse 32. It says, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? As I was talking about earlier, when you have this understanding, it helps you to freely receive from God. You know, I think many times we growing up with interactions from our parents or our dad even, you know, growing up, how, how you grew up. A any parent at some point is going to like do something for their child and it's like they don't really want to do it, but they do it because they know it's the right thing to do. But God is not like our earthly parents. Whenever God does anything for us, big, small, uh, suddenly, long term, you know, he does it with a passion and a zeal because he, he loves us. Amen. So I hope you guys were blessed by this message. May God bless you all in the name of Jesus Christ. I'll talk to you guys next time. Amen.